Jacob Blake's shooter faces no charges because why would you? For those that are unfamiliar with what happened with Jacob Blake, he was he was trying to actually break up a altercation between two, I believe, two white women. I'm, I'm, and, you know, he's a black guy. He had his kid in his car and the cops were called. And Jacob Blake um, went back uh, to break up this fight. And the cop showed up and thought he was part of the problem and then shot him seven times, paralyzing Jacob Blake. He was in the hospital, right? And then in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where all this happened, there was a lot of protests. The cop showed up. The, the Wisconsin militia showed up. Uh, and things got violent, as they usually do when the police get involved. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse then shot two protesters and, and jogged lightly. He did a light trot back to the cops. Uh, and they just protected him. He is now pleading not guilty when he was caught on camera openly firing on protesters, unarmed protesters. The cop that shot Jacob Blake is not getting any charges. He paralyzed a man. And the claim is, oh, he might have had a knife. Oh, okay. We're going with might have as a legal defense. There's no proof that he had a knife. And even if he did, does it really mean that a cop should shoot somebody seven times and paralyze them? I mean, really, that's that's what you're going with. There was a bunch of NBA, NBA players that, uh, that kneeled. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I, I will say the NBA has been better about uh, trying to protest police brutality and they could have had a larger movement uh, had uh, Obama not stepped in. But, you know, Obama thinks to fund the police is a quippy statement, quippy quote. It's a quippy tagline. Quippy tagline, that's what he calls it. <clears throat> so, you know, none of these people that are part of the Democratic Party are showing themselves to be allies of the Black Lives Matter movement or allies of people of color that are being gunned down to the streets by police because no, none of them are coming out and saying what happened in uh, Kenosha, in Louisville, in uh, Minneapolis, in any of these cities where, you know, what happened with uh, Tamir Rice's uh, judgment are fair. They're saying, be quiet and go home. Be quiet and go home. Black Lives Matter is loud. That's what Obama says. The day that they made this announcement, the day that this story broke, they sent the National Guard into Kenosha, blocked up businesses because they feared what was going to happen. Why would you do that? Why would you take a reaction like that? Is it because you know what you've done is wrong? morally and ethically and that these people have justified anger of not being not wanting to be gunned down in the streets by an organization that has taken up an oath to protect and serve at least that's what they say they did the same thing in louisville the day that that grand jury decision dropped the national guard was called in and a curfew was put into place not, I mean, it was like not even an hour after that judgment came out because they knew what they were doing was wrong. And nobody escalates violence better than the cops, right? The cops are the ones that really escalate the violence. I've talked to a tons of people that have uh, been at protests in Louisville and in Minneapolis. I've, I, I've attended one um, very peaceful and random fucking agitator showed up. That was odd. Uh, there's a video about it. And I don't want to go into it too deep uh, and deviate from the point that I'm trying to make with with this here. 
This is an inverted criminal justice system. That's what this is. This is an inverted criminal justice system. In what reality does a a person stand on somebody's neck for nine, almost nine minutes and get a lesser sentence than murder? In what reality do cops illegally bust into somebody's apartment and start wildly shooting and claim that their lives were in danger because one person had a gun who we, which was legally bought Random strangers are breaking into their house and they claim self-defense and they're the problem. In what reality is that allowed? In what reality is a legal gun owner supposed to get shot in his car? In what reality is a, is a, a fucking 12-year-old that has a toy gun that gets shot in the chest the problem? That's not... the You, you ever notice how whenever these kind of cases come up across the country, there's no defense. There's, there, there's no proof of guilt, right? They immediately say that they're guilty. And, and then they start saying, well, they had a, a criminal thing 10 years ago, 15 years ago. He might have had a knife. What is the excuse for the 12-year-old child? Why are these police officers still allowed to be anywhere remotely near any of this shit? Uh, and be anywhere near law enforcement at this point. How can we trust the police? And we have a president, president-elect, that claims that he wants to give more money to the cops for program. Why? They already have a shit ton of money. And they can't do anything positive with it. They're a menace. They're a menace now. That's what they are. Personally, as a brown person, I'm very skeptical of, of the police. I don't trust them, and I'm very unnerved when one shows up around me. That's the, that's the reality of it in this country. They're, none, of, none of this makes sense. You, you, you can't... If you can't tell the difference... Between someone trying to break up an argument and then you decide that they're a problem and you shoot them seven times in the back, you, you shouldn't be a police officer. If you can't tell the difference between a toy gun that a 12-year-old is holding and an actual gun that someone dangerous might be holding, you shouldn't be a police officer. If you can't tell the difference between a man who is who, who literally can't breathe because he's telling you he can't breathe and you, and you continue to put your knee on that person's neck, you don't – you can't be a police officer. There's a reason why they keep doing this. Why people like Darren Wilson, who put his knee on George Floyd's neck, the murderers of Breonna Taylor, the people that shot Jacob Blake, the murderers of Tamir Rice, all of these cops, all of these killer cops, there's a reason why they get away with it or they get you know these slap-on-the-wrist type sentences. They're trying to break the morale. That's what they're trying to do. If more and more of these cops get away with what it is, then it'll break people's spirits and maybe they won't march on the streets. Maybe they won't create a movement. Maybe, you know, on, on, on a city level, these defund the police movements and these defund the police legislations don't go through. Maybe civil rights leaders will stop asking Joe Biden to use executive order to approve some police reform uh, legislations. Maybe that won't happen. They want to break the morale. I don't think it will. Uh, every time I hear a case like this, I'm I'm more more pissed off, and and I believe even more 
that we have to defund the police. That we need community care first. That we need more mental health assistance. You don't need guys with guns for domestic disturbances. You don't need guys with guns to show up when someone's having a mental episode. If there's an active shooter case, yeah, okay. I get it. You might need a gun for that sort of situation. Sidebar, um, my girlfriend and I did start watching uh, The Watchmen last night, and it is an interesting take uh, where white supremacists are actually treated as domestic terrorists and like cops have to get approval to pull their gun out. It is an interesting take on things. Uh I guess Robert Redford was I'm I'm I i do not want to spoil too much for people that might have not seen the 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 show yet, but I'm very excited to watch it. I'm we, we got through the first two episodes and, and we're uh very excited to continue through. Um but it's an interest it it is an interesting take on on uh uh on the cops and on heroes and things. It's very well written so far. I'm very excited about it. Um make one final point that I want to make, and I'm going to be very blunt about this. These cops need to be in prison. Julian Assange doesn't need to be in prison. George Floyd didn't need to be in prison. Right? Eric Garner, Mike Brown, none, th these people are not crim cops that murdered them are criminals. These people are not above the law that they represent. They are a part of it. And our criminal justice system now is saying that they are above it. We have to get rid of qualified immunity. And anybody that doesn't is not on your side and doesn't deserve your support and doesn't deserve your vote and doesn't deserve your your money or any of that kind of shit. If electoral politics is really that important, stop electing assholes that will let these cops go and then give you some bullshit justified reason that they get let go. There is no justified reason why murderous cops are still on the fucking streets or serving desk duty. Who gives a fuck? Send them to prison. There is no legitimate reason that you can fucking tell me that these people don't belong in prison. Oh, he could have had a fuck off. Nobody gives a shit. He didn't have a knife. If you think that your life is in danger just because a black man is present, then you are fucking racist and you should not be in the police force. <laughs> Let's look at some comment. Oh, thank you for drawing. It's TDMS is what we were talking about earlier. Uh, Obama only swoops in to kill progressive movements these days. Yeah, that's, that's primarily his role. Uh, Cop New Jacob. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, the neck case. Yeah, yeah, the cop, Darren Wilson, apparently knew George Floyd. That one was a tough one because I looked into that quite extensively. And there was an interview that, um, so if, if for those of you that don't know, the details of that is um, George Floyd worked as a security guard or a bouncer at a at a nightclub. And uh, Darren Wilson, the, the, the cop that stood on his neck, was moonlighting there george floyd yeah this is a george floyd case and uh apparently darren wilson had a problem working with people like george floyd right i think he had a problem working with a big black dude because i think he felt like his life was being threatened by just the mere presence of a black dude he's racist so uh he complained about it but but then he just like said i i don't want to work here anymore and 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 left the, or that was the that was where the story that i read left off um, so he might have knew him. He might have recognized him. I'm not sure. It's it's difficult to prove that. Um, but you can say that this person made a choice to stand on somebody's neck for almost nine minutes, eight minutes and 46 seconds. Why is this person not getting first degree murder charges? And the argument came, oh, it's really hard to prove. Or to... Okay, still send him to prison. Second degree. Send him to prison. Oh, shit. I'm moving around so much. My mic stand is like, hey, well, chill the fuck out, bro. Here we go. Uh, there's no reason why any of these cops shouldn't be in prison at this point.
Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to, to, to address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.